They don't. <laughs> Grabe, napaka-effortless talaga ng, ng voice ng aking brother. Sana o. Oh. <laughs> Ayan, so speaking of effortless, uh, God is bringing us again in, <laughs> masyado ko yung tawang tawa. Uh, God is bringing us once again in His Word, uh, which is uh, to be an effortless. In this year, 2024, God called us to be effortless. So, uh, let us all read. Our book for today is on Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. And I hope you also have your Bible and the verse was also flashed on the screens. Let us all read. The people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Hallelujah. Let us all pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we just want to lay down all our lives unto you. May you teach us, Lord, by your word to be effortless, God, as we follow you in our life. Lord, we thank you. We just entrust this time unto you. We welcome your spirit. May you use me, Panginoon, as your instrument to uh, declare, Panginoon, the good news for your people. Lord, we thank you. This all pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Ayan, binigyan ko po ng title ang ating sermon for today, Be Effortless. Lay down your life and follow Christ. So this is a commandment from God. The commandment of God for us is to be effortless. Be effortless. In verse 1 to 2, it says here, One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their So ito po yung naging scenario or the situation on what is happening dito po sa verse. It is when Peter and his companion, they tried to cut a fish the whole night. They tried to cut a fish but at the very end, they never catch any fish. And we can see here that the hopelessness and the helplessness of the fishermen. Why? It says here that Jesus, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. So makikita po natin dito, the fishermen were already washing their nets so they give up on catching kasi wala po talaga silang makuha. So they started to keep their tools, their nets, they're about, maybe they're about to go home. But in here, Our point number one is that in times of hopelessness, God sees and God gives hope. So out of many people crowding, it says there that there are many people. Hindi lamang po sila Peter and his companion ang nanduroon. But there were so many crowds. It says there so many crowds were crowding around him, which is Jesus, and listening to the word of God. So out of many people crowding, God saw Peter and company. Nakita po ng Panginoon yung boat nila Peter. Is it a coincidence? Na nakita po ng Panginoon? Let's see. So in His presence and in His words, the Lord began to bring hope in the life of Peter. So this is the heart of Christ. 
that He knows when we are weary, He knows when we are tired, He knows when we are helpless, when we are hopeless. God knows it. Alam niya kung may problema po tayo. If we are in deep troubles, God knows it. And God sees us. And God brings hope to us. Why? Because the heart of God is for us to help us. This is the will of God for us is to help us. This is the heart of God. He got into the boat in verse 3. He got into the boat. Jesus is the one who came near to Peter. Makita po ba natin? It is not Peter who went to God and asked God, Lord, help me. Wala po kaming catch. But it is God, it is Jesus who saw Peter, who saw the boat. That's why Jesus came to the boat of Peter. Now, this is for Jesus to share the word of God. It says there in verse 3 that he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from ashore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. So that's why we must not to be, be too hard on ourselves when we are sometimes we experience a lot of difficulties, we experience a lot of troubles in our lives. Minsan masyado po tayong um, we, we, we think too much in our life. Sinisisi natin yung sarili po natin. Or maybe sometimes we, we thought that God cannot see us. God doesn't know our very situation. But the truth is, God always see us. This is the Word of God na nakikita po tayo ng Panginoon. Alam po niya yung situation po natin. He knows what is our struggles. We must not ask God, Lord. Right? Kasi ang will po ng Panginoon is to help us. This is the will of God. That whenever we have problems, God is not very God is not happy to see us living in hardship. But God's will is for us to, to live in a victorious life. This is the will of God for us to be. God wants to help us when we are in trouble. So we must not ask God, Lord, is it your will for us to be successful? Do you still ask that to God? Lord, is it your will that I would be successful? No, right? Because God's will is, yes, always for us to be able to be successful in life. Ito po yung will po ng Panginoon. So, But in our life, we are experiencing a lot of difficulties, right? Maybe we ask, Lord, and why am I experiencing hardship? Is it, di ba sabi mo, yung will mo is for me to be successful, for me to be, have a better life, but why am I experiencing hardship in my life? Is it the will of God that we are experiencing this? No, right? This is not the will of God. But sometimes God allowed. Amen po ba? God allowed hardship for His will to be done in our life. Right? Maybe God just want us something, uh, want us to realize something. That we experience hardship in life, it is for the will of God, for us to be sin. That's why God allow hardship in our life. Right? Even in our experience, we are experiencing hardship in our finance. Meron po ba dito? Or meron po bang wala dito? <laughs> We are experiencing a lot of hardship in our finance, right? That uh, marami po tayong utang, we have a lot of bills to pay. Sometimes God allow it. Inaalaw po ng Panginoon ang mga ito. But hindi po ito yung will ng Panginoon. Rather, His will for us is to see God's love and grace despite our very situation. And God is willing to help us just like how He did to Peter. Kagaya po ng ginawa po niya, alam po ng Panginoon na sila Peter ay very hopeless, very frustrated. Pero inyo, ganun po yung nangyari kila Peter. The whole night, sila po ay gising, sila po ay nandoon sa may, sa ocean. Nakailang beses po siguro sila nag-arya. Ilang beses po silang naghulog ng net nila. But you see, everything failed at wala po silang nakatch. But God is willing to help and God is willing to rescue Peter. 
And even in our relationship, minsan we are so we are also hopeless in our relationship. Amen. In our work, in our relationship to our family, in our friends, and even to our loved ones. And God is willing to hope to help us and to bring hope in our relationship. I remember when I and en- when I enjoy were still in the boyfriend and girlfriend uh, state in of our, of our life. And I was so, I'm really so, I always like to, 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 to tell this story. It was the, the story of my brokenness. <laughs> yeah, so there came, there came a time that uh, Joy broke up with me when we were boyfriends and girlfriend. And I was so, and I was so hurt. It's like my earth being shattered. Right? Ooh. <laughs> Parang yung mundo ko ay gumuho talaga. Because I really love her. I really love, I really love her and I tried my best to fix my relationship to her. I texted her every day. And you know, I want to tr- wanna fix our relationship. But there came a time that I was already hopeless. And I, wa- I already want to give up on our relationship. Na wala naman na talaga because she already broke up with me. But because I never received any message from her, right? And dun yung he declines all my messages, wala pong replies. So I give up and I accepted everything that uh, wala na po talaga kami. So I text her for the very last time saying my goodbyes. <laughs> but then she replied. <laughs> again. Ayan, but then she replied. So where is God here? Saan nga ba natin makikita ang Panginoon dito? But will ba ni Lord na masaktan ako ng gusto? Is it the will of God na maging hopeless po ako sa relationship po namin? It's not the will of God, but God allowed it. Inalaw po ng Panginoon yung brokenness ko to happen to me na maging hopeless sa relationship po namin. But it's not the will of God na ako po ay mag manatili pong masaktan or manatiling lugmok. But God's will is for me to realize that the, that, that, that the will of the Lord is for me to see God, to be, to see God as my God and not joy. Because at that time, it was joy who was my priority. Siya po yung naging priority ko sa life ko. Even in my ministry, never, hindi na po ako nag ng ministry. And uh, I let Joy to be my, my, my God. Siya yung naging priority ko. But when, I, when Joy and I broke up, I started to see God. And I went back to my ministry. I went back to, to serve excuse me, to serve God. And then when I realized all these things and I started to, to say my goodbyes to, to Joy, that's, that was the time that Joy replied to me, and I know it is God. It is God who, who paved way that Joy replied. And I know it is God who really fixed our relationship. That's why Joy and I now are married, and we are happily with a one baby, <laughs> ang daughter po namin. And I know God is really willing to help, even in our relationship. And I experience it. And I know that maybe... Sa atin po ay, we also experience hardship in our relationship and we also want to give up. Maybe sa buhay mag-asawa, you want to give up on your relationship with your husband and your wife. But God is telling to us that do not be hopeless because God is willing to help and God is willing to bring hope and God is willing to rescue us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, and this is God, right? God sees us and God saw everything. Tanungin po natin ng ating mga katabi, are you hopeless? Are you in need of help? God is looking at you right now. Nakikita po tayo ng Panginoon. Tell Him, are you tired? I know lahat, lahat po tayo tired. But you see, God is willing to help us. And God is willing to rescue us. He will bring strength. Kung ano po yung kailangan po natin. And this is the heart of God. Right? Nakita po natin kung paano po ang Panginoon kumilos. Nakita niya sila Peter, lugmok, sila Peter, naguhugas po ng kanilang net kasi wala po silang huli and they give up on catching fish. 
But God says here, He saw the water's edge, two boats, and He got into the boats of Simon Peter. So this year, we declare effortless 2024. And, says, and the Word of God says, Be still and know that I am God. Know that our God, who is this God? He is the God who sees us, that can see us. This God knows our very situation. Nakikita po niya, and He is willing to help us. So tell it to your seatmates, do not lose hope. God is willing to help. So now that we know that God sees us, alam po natin yung puso ng Panginoon. Ay, ganito pala ang Panginoon. Right? Gusto niya pala akong tulungan. Nakikita pala ng Panginoon yung situation ko na ako po ay broken, na kailangan ko ng financial assistance. Nakikita po tayo ng Panginoon. Now that we know that God sees us and willing to help and rescue us, what is our part? Ano naman po ang kailangan po nating gawin? So for our point number, number two is that we need to allow God into your boat and lay down your net. Luke chapter 3 verse 7. Let us go back on verse 3 um, and verse three, and see how did Peter respond to Jesus. And this is how we also need to respond to God. In verse 3, ang sabi po dito, dun sa second, uh, verse 3, he got into the boats, one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from ashore. Then he sat down and taught the people the boat. Sub point A is that we need to allow Christ into your boat and listen. Boat, what does the boat signify to the fishermen? Ano nga ba yung sinisignify ng boat sa buhay po ng mga fishermen? It is life. This is where their life is. Yung boat po nila, ito po yung kumbaga, when you're a fisherman, mas madalas po yung life mo nandoon po sa boat. So this is your life. And God is telling to us, is we need to allow Christ into our boat. And this is how we respond. Right? Nalaman na po natin, God is willing to help us. God is willing to rescue us. But are we willing to accept Christ? Are we willing to accept God to enter into our life? We need to allow God to enter into our boat. And we need to listen. It is allowing God in our life. If you are Peter, Pag tayo po si Peter, how do we respond? Okay? The whole night you worked so hard to catch fish, yet you still don't have any catch. And you are so tired, so hopeless, so frustrated. Because we have to understand the very situation of Peter. Hindi lamang po si Peter yung walang catch. As you can see, there were two boats, and there was Simon, a Peter, and then the sons of a Zebedee, and then it says there are other partners of Peter. So hindi lamang po si Peter yung walang catch, but even the people around him, yung mga tao na uh, nag, ano dito? Mga tao na sumama kay Peter to catch a fish, supposedly, pero wala po silang huli. So makikita po natin dito yung frustration po ni Peter. It's like a failure. Right? And then here comes a teacher. Bigla pong pumasok. Pumasok dun po sa boat na sinasakyan po ni Peter. And wala pong paalam. So how do we respond if you are Peter? Siguro, oh, excuse me. Right? But you see Peter, hindi po, it, it does not tell her in the Bible that Peter rejected Jesus. Actually, he allowed Okay? That's why nakapagturo po ang Panginoong Yesus. It is because Peter allowed Jesus to speak the Word of God. Hindi pa nga po natapos doon eh. Hindi pa natapos doon sa pagsakay niya po doon sa boat. But it says here, sabi niya po dito, and ask him to put out a little from shore. So inutusan pa nga itong si Peter. Right? Si Peter na walang huli ay inutusan. Yet, even all these things happen in the life of Peter. He still allows God to come in 
into his life. He allows Jesus to speak his word. And Peter also listened. We see Peter did not say anything. He just allowed Jesus into his boat and listened to the word of God. So what is the implication of this to our life? Point one, God is willing to help us, right? But do we allow God to enter into our life to help us? Do we allow God to help us? To allow God to speak to our life? Why many people, why many people fail to receive the help of God? Bakit nga ba? It is because our heart is closed, our mind is closed, our ears are closed. That's why God can help, help us. Because we fail to allow Him into our lives, we fail to acknowledge God sa buhay po natin. So how can we allow God into our life? It is that we need to accept Christ and listen to His words. So after Peter allowed Jesus into his boat, verse 3, it says here, Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. So Peter actually is with God. He is accompanied with Jesus in the boat. And they listen to the word of God. And you see, allowing God to speak in our life. Have you ever had in your life when, we, when, when you experience a lot of difficulties and you allow God to speak in our life? You allow God to speak His words in our life. Maybe we ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do? Right? These are the questions that we try to ask God when we have problems, when we have Difficulties, Lord, what do you want me to do? We ask God. But when we ask God, are we willing to listen? Are we willing to hear doon po sa response ng Panginoon? But you see here, Peter, when he allowed God to, to step on his boat, he then listens to the word of God. He then listens to the word of Christ. Lord what, Lord, what do you want me to do? This is allowing God to speak to our life. The willingness to trust and listen to Christ in our life. And this is how we need to respond. Doon po sa heart po ng Panginoon a heart that is willing to help us. So every morning devo devotion, we allow God to speak in our life. Amen? We allow God to speak to us personally, according to our needs, according to our, on what we are experiencing. Same with Peter, I know that the word of Jesus brings hope to them. Right? Hopeless kasi si Peter that time eh. But when he heard the word of God, I know that the word of God brings hope in the life of Peter, kasi kung hindi, what do you think will happen? Baka hinulog niya si Jesus dun, right? Ang dami mong sinasabi, wala nga akong huli, right? But because the Word of God brings hope into the life of Peter, they continue to listen, okay? They continue to listen in the Word of God. To speak to us and to listen. It is very important to us to listen because many Christians, even ourselves, sometimes even though we accepted Christ in our life, but we choose not to listen to God. Amen? We choose not to obey Christ. Why? It is because it is what our flesh is telling us. Ito yung sinasabi po ng mundo. Right? Or ourselves, we can do it. We do not need God. Hindi natin kailangan ng Panginoon. All I have to do is to be hardworking. Right? All I have to do is to study hard, to give my best my best effort, so that I can be success, successful. So we choose not to listen because we do not trust the Word of God. Sabi po sa Bible, honor your father and your, and your mother that you may have long life. Lord, hindi ba pansit yun? Ginagamit po natin yung ating utak. We try to Have our reasoning. Because why? Sometimes we do not understand the Word of God. That's why we choose not to listen to the Word of God. God says 2024 will be an effortless year. 
But we do not listen. Bakit na naman? It is because January pa lang, Lord, ang dami ko ng problems. Ang dami ko ng hardship sa buhay. How can I be effortless in 2024? But God, but what does God wants us to understand today? That in our life, no matter what difficulties we have, no matter what the world is telling us, we need to allow God to enter into our life and to listen to His Word. For the Word of God will never fail. Amen? The Word of God never fail. It will never come to Him void. So now that we are, we hear the Word of God and we listen. Ano po yung susunod? After po natin narinig, Lord, anong gusto mong gawin ko? And the Lord spoke to you. The Lord replied unto you. Sabi niya, ganito ang gawin mo, anak ko. Okay? We need to, we need to obey. Amen? We need to obey. So point letter B is that obey and lay down your net. In verse 4 to 5, it says here, When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. So Peter might say, Teacher, I really love the way you teach us about God. I really love the way you teach us about the ways of God. You are really a good teacher. Your teachings brings hope to us. But teacher, I am a fisherman. Right? I am a fisherman. And you're telling me to let down on my net for me to have a catch? Teacher, have you not seen our situation? The whole night, we catch fish. And it is night time is the best time for us to catch fish. Now you're telling me to lay down my net in this very hour so that we can catch fish? I know you're a good teacher, but I am a very good fisherman, Lord. But, it says here, but because you say so. It means, Peter, having this obedience of faith in him, because Jesus said so, not because of his knowledge, right? not because of his knowledge that he can catch fish, because he will really not catch a fish because of the time. But because of his faith and obedience with God, what does Peter do? He laid down the net. So what does the net mean in our life today? You see the net? The net for fishing is the tool used for fishing, amen? And for a fisherman, this is where their knowledge is. Right? They use their knowledge when, where to lay down the net. That is their knowledge, their strength, their expertise, their profession, their belief. But Peter, he is willingly willing to lay down the net. Right? He lays down all yung mga pinag-aralan niya. Even hindi ito yung time ng paghuli, Lord. But because you say so, I will obey. That's why he laid down his net. Sometimes it is hard for us to obey the word of God. Why? Because it is so hard for us to lay down our nets. Yun nga sinabi ko kanina, what is our nets? Our knowledge, lahat po naman na pag-aralan po natin, our belief. We think that we are better than God. Sometimes in our life, we ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do? And God says, my child, do this. Pero Lord, parang ganito. Kasi nakita ko sa survey, mas mataas yung successful rate po nito. Right? Because of our knowledge, we disobey the Word of God. We cannot obey the Word of God. Because of our nets, we cannot obey the Word of God. Sometimes, sa buhay po natin, we already have plans, right? From, from, pagka baby pa lang, <laughs> naggumawa ka na ng plan mo nung pagkapanganak mo pa lang. Right? Hanggang sa age 30, dapat ganito, Lord, I already have this, I already acquired these things. But you see, 
all these things that we plan, yes, it is okay to have plans. But when, we, when our plan fails, how can we respond? Sometimes sinisisi po natin ng Panginoon. Lord, ba? And we are so hard to ourselves. Mas, anong, 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 ilang taon na ako, pero wala pa rin po akong asawa. Right? And we look down ourselves. Kapalit-palit ba ako? Right? Marami na po tayong mga iniisip na it, hindi naman ito yung will ng Panginoon po sa atin. But when we learn to lay down our nets, all, our, all the things that hinders us to obey God, these are all our nets. When we lay it all down, what will happen? In verse 6 to 7, sabi po dito, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both, both boats so full that they began to sink. So they have a lot of catch that the nets began to break. Amen? This is when they learned to obey God and they lay down their nets. They have a catch, a large amount of fish, not only Peter but even his companions. The two boats were filled with fish that it is now sinking. Right? Na magsisink na. Do we also want this kind of blessing? A blessing, an overflowing blessing. Just like Peter. Yung nareceive po nila Peter. Na blessing. Do you like it? Tell it to your brother. Do you like this blessing? Do you like it? Tanungin nyo nga po. Baka ayaw po nila kasi you ask them, do you like this kind of blessing? Okay? Tell them, allow God into your life and listen. Obey God and begin to lay down your nets. Amen. It is a total surrender to God. Amen. Amen. So, that is our response doon po sa heart po ng Panginoong Jesus. As God wants to help us, as God is willing to you know, God loves us no matter what we are, no matter what we do, God loves us. But all we need to do is to respond and allow God to love us. Amen? To let God to enter into our life and speak into our life. So, for our third and last point is to become God's disciple and receive the fullness of His blessing. So here comes the third point. It says in verse 8, Simon Peter saw this. He fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were established, astonished at the cash of this they had taken. And so were James, John, son of Zebedee, Simon's partner. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid from now. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on the shore left everything and followed him. So after what had happened, Peter just reali realized whom they are with. Because of the large cache of fish, they realized, oh, it is you, Lord. Why? Because it is a miracle that they could catch a fish such amount at that very time, at that very day. Na hindi po, kung titingnan po natin sa uh, in the knowledge of man, it is very impossible for you to catch a fish. That's why Peter understood, it is you, Lord. Peter now know that it is the Lord yung kausap po nila. So, and this is the very, uh, so Peter Peter already knew it was the Lord, so he starts to fear the Lord, for he knows that he is sinful. But ano, so, ano po yung sinabi po ng Panginoon? The Lord said, do not be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people to be fishers of men. So, where is the fullness of blessing here? Yes, they have received a large amount of fish. They catch a lot of fish, and that is the blessing from their being obedient for laying down their nets. But the fullness of blessing was received when they become disciples and the followers of Christ. 
Amen? They already have a large catch, yet they leave everything. Makita po ba natin? They know that with Christ, they have everything. And this is when we become the disciples of Christ. Remember Christ? When He, in Luke chapter 9, verse 1 to 3, and I want you to see it, Luke chapter 9, it says here, this is what a effortless disciple means. God calls us to become an effortless disciple. It says here, when Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them the power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. This is what the disciple of God is doing. At ang sabi niya po dito sa verse 3, he told them, take nothing for the journey, no stuff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Have you seen this? When God calls us to be His disciple, hindi po tayo ni-require ng Panginoon. You should have a lot of salary. You should have a lot of savings for you to become my disciples. Hindi sinabi na Panginoon, you should be a Bible school scholar. You should be... But what does God require us? Requires us to come and take nothing. To be effortless. Hindi po natin kailangan mag-carry ng kahit anuman. Right? for us to survive the journey of becoming a disciple of God. But it is God, becoming the disciple of God, is to be effortless, to be dependent to God. This is when we learn to be the disciples, to be the kingdom of, of God. It is when we will receive the fullness of blessing. Amen? The fullness of blessing is that the thinking that Christ is everything. That you left everything. You see, Peter, they left everything that they catch. E yung catch na ito is very big amount. Maybe it can survive them for a month or a week, right? But you see, Peter, they left everything. Why? Why did Peter, why do you think that Peter left everything? Says here, so they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything, and followed him. So it is when they follow Christ and be his disciples, they receive the fullness of God's blessing. They left everything to catch that they catch, but they receive. What did they receive? It is our, our great God. They receive everything. Do you get? They leave everything that they catch, but they receive the author of everything. And this is Christ. When we become disciples of Christ, God is always with us. And God will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Whatever things that we need, whatever things that we are encountering right now, God, sabi ko kanina, God always see us. And we have a God who is everything. Yung wala na po tayong hihingiin pa. Because we already have everything. Is that possible? Yes, it is possible to have Christ in us. All things are possible. Because He is the author of everything. So let us follow Christ and became, become His kingdom disciple that we could enjoy the fullness of God's blessings in our life. Follow Christ means to be with Christ. Following Christ means to be with Christ, right? Pag meron po tayong fina-follow, of course, nasa harapan po natin, wherever it goes, we need to go. And this is following Christ. We need to be with Christ. And be with Christ means, in verse 11, again, it says here, so they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed Him. So we need to live Everything. Right? Sabi nga ni Rendon. <laughs> Joke lang. But we need to live everything. Lahat po ng mga baggage po natin. All the things that hinders us to follow God. We need to set it all aside and just follow God. Because this is a calling from God. 
You need to be effortless to be disciple of God. Ayaw ng Panginoon na marami po tayong mga gamit-gamit pag tayo po ay kanyang tinawag. But God says, be effortless. Be effortless means we have we, we became dependent to the Lord, living in the grace of God. And this is the life of being a disciple of God. Be effortless to know how to lay down your life and to follow Christ. When I was called to be a full-time worker, I also experienced the goodness of God when I became the disciple of Christ. To follow Christ, it is not also easy for me to lay down my nets. I also have a lot of nets sa buhay ko. When I was called to be a full-time worker, of course, I also think of my future because I also have a lot of plans. So I need to leave, to leave my job. I need to leave my, my profession. I need to leave my source of income to be His kingdom disciple. It's not an easy journey. But the Word of God is real. Because when I became a disciple of God, God really moves in my, in my life. Because when I was, when I was still in the world, I was still in the marketplace. Yes, I have high salaries, but there's a lot of things that I also carry. I also carry my fear of my future. I also carry frustrations because of our work. And these are the things that I have on my net. But when God called me to become His disciples and called me to be the full-time worker here in the church, I learned to let go, let down of this net. Oh, my future. Letting down doesn't mean you don't think about your future. But letting down means trusting God to work on your future. Trusting God to move in our life. And you see, when I became a full-time worker, I really thank God. Because every day, I learn to thank God because I experience every day the grace when you, when you, when you live according in the grace of God, you'll be thankful enough. Dati kasi, nung ako po ay nasa marketplace pa, I have a lot of things that I want. I'm not contented in my life. But when I became a full-time, wala, wala din naman ako masyadong pera, wala din naman ako masyadong mga pag-aari, but you see, God changed my heart. God gave me a heart who is contented on what I am. And God bless me with a wonderful wife, a wonderful kid, a happy family. And this is when we learn to allow God into our life. Yes, God will move. God will move. Maybe sa buhay po natin sa araw na ito, we have also have a lot of nets in our life. And we cannot lay down, cannot let go. Why? Because we have a lot of fears. Fear of our future. Fear what will happen to your family, your life. But the Word of God says, do not be afraid. Why? From now on, God has raised us up to be His kingdom disciples. God has called us. Maybe you are so hard to yourself, but God is calling us, be effortless. And to be effortless is to become kingdom disciple. And God will surely bless us. Just like how 
Peter and his companions experienced the abundance of blessings and even the fullness of blessings before they were fishermen, but now they were called the fishers of men. And this is how God raised them up. Maybe in our life, we, we also want to experience ascending. Right? 2023, that is what we declare. Lord, ascending 2023. But it seems like in our life, we did not experience these things. But do you still remember our preaching? We declare that the ascending of God is forever. That God's ascending does not stop because the love of God to us endures forever. So we declare an ascending 2024 effortlessly. An effortless ascending. Amen. And this is God calling us today. May we ask that may we all stand and let us respond to the calling of God. some of us here are experiencing a lot of hardship in their life. And you felt like you are hopeless. You're, you have nowhere to run. No one to rescue you. Maybe it is in your finance, in your relationship. Today, God is telling us, my child, I am willing to help you. I am willing to rescue you. I see you in your hard times. I see you when you're tired. I see you when you're lonely. I see you when you are hurt. That's why today I am calling you. I want to save you. Allow me to enter into your life. Allow me to speak to you, says the Lord. My child, I love you. It is not we, it's not my will for you to fail. It's not my will for you to experience hardship. 
but my will for you is to prosper, to have a successful life, to be happy. My child, allow me to end. Let us take this time to commune with God. To take this time to open our hearts to the Lord. for God to enter into our life and allow Him to speak to us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on. Let us pray. Communicate to our Lord. Lord, here I am. I need your help. And I open my heart open this vessel, Lord. Come and enter it. Speak it to our life.
God, and for your love. Thank you, Lord, for the rescue. Thank you for calling us, oh God. Today we declare, Father, that as you have called us to be your disciples, we will trust in you. And we will learn to lay down all our nets, all, all these problems, all the things that hinder us, oh God. Father, we lay it all down on you. And we surrender everything, God. We surrender everything. Lord, thank you for calling us to be your disciple, to be effortless, God. And we know that you are everything to us. That as long as that we have you in our life, Lord, we will never lack anything. But we have everything. And we declare, Lord, that may you bless us. Not only the large amount of cash, oh God, but Lord, you also called us to become a kingdom disciple, to become a fishers of man. So, Father, I declare that may you use us, oh God, to catch all the people, oh God, that you want us, that you need, Panginoon, that you have given us to catch, Lord. Father, I pray that may you bless us, oh God, to become your kingdom disciples, Lord. Lord, may you give us courage and strength, oh God. In our life, as you have said, do not be afraid because we have you in our lives. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word today, O God, for us to be effortless. Yes, we declare this effortless 2024, O God, and we lay down our life unto you as we follow you, Lord. We follow you in your ways, in your words, and even in your love, oh God, that we could also share the love to people, oh God. Father, we thank you. That is all we pray. Hallelujah. Sir. For uh, the first timers who are joining us today, I just want to invite you to come in front and to receive Jesus in your life. Sa mga sa first timers po na kasama natin. And you want to receive Christ and experience a life of abundance, just like how Peter experience abundance if after having Christ get into his life. We want to invite you sa harap and just lead you into prayer to receive Jesus into your life. And also online, if you are first time joining us, we want to invite you to a prayer in accepting Christ into your life. Close your eyes and just follow after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I am nothing before you. Today, Lord, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I invite you to come into my life. And I, this, and I pray that may you lead me into a life full of hope, full of abundance, full of joy, and full of peace. Today, Lord, I surrender everything unto you. Come and take control of my life. Ako na lang po magpe-pray. Father, today, just pray for this life, Panginoon, who have surrendered their lives unto you, O God, as they offer their being, their spirit, their heart, their soul unto you, God, I just pray that, Lord, may you let them experience the fullness of your word, the fullness of your joy, of the, fee, the peace and the abundance, Panginoon, that, God, you let Peter experience, God, I declare for these lives, Panginoon, ikaw, Panginoon, ang magpuno ng anumang kakulangan nila, and even, God, take them out, take all the pains and hurts they have, and, God, let them experience your healing, a life, Lord, na puno ng pag-asa anuman ang kanilang uh, sitwasyon sa araw na ito. A life full of peace for whatever, Lord, their problems and struggles we have right now. God, thank you 
Thank you, God. I'm a newbie. Please, with this life, Lord, as they offer their lives unto you, lead them, guide them, direct them, O God, to the path, Lord, that we you have um, you have prepared for them. And God, I declare and release the fullness of your blessings to be upon them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Paul. Hallelujah, hallelujah.